Hello, welcome. Throwback Thursday. How are you doing today? I'm still getting organized. Getting a few things out of my way here. And welcome. In keeping with the Throwback Thursday, you may think that the music sounds a little dated, but not really. It's from the 50s and 60s. It's from my time, but very early. Okay. So, anyway, I had the pleasure of having a short two-day vacation, totally unexpected, no sunshine, but very nice hotel. And sometimes in the middle of the winter, Hubby and I do that just because we've had it. We want a little bit of luxury, and this time of year, it's pretty inexpensive to do. So it was really, really nice. But I lost two days of fiber work. And normally that doesn't bother me. I'm trying not to let that bother me. It shouldn't matter. But I'm thinking about, oh, I could have gotten so much done. But it was really nice and very, very much needed by both of us. So that was yesterday and today and it was we got back here home a little sometime this afternoon and I really cleaned up my little studio here and that was it right got the stuff out and I haven't really been thinking about tonight's stream I have what I want to do but with most of these throwback Thursdays they are literally first time I've ever done anything, reading directions that may or may not make sense, and, you know, that sort of thing. So they are fun for that reason. I got to work in my room last Monday, beginning of this week. I got to work where a lot of my craft stuff is stored that I don't get to regularly because it is up a flight of stairs and currently I'm not doing stairs well I can do them but it's not a routine thing for me and so I may get a habit if I go up there I do a lot as much as I can and then I don't do anything for a while but my goal when I went up there was and I did talk about this on the Tuesday stream I know um, my goal was to get some things rearranged but I also went through a number of my what I knew were older pattern books to continue looking for things that I can do on the throwback Thursdays. I'm kind of half wondering in the back of my mind if maybe this is a good idea but I'm not going to have a whole bunch to do but I'm going to not worry about that. I'll deal with that as I come to it and really what it means is embarking maybe on bigger projects that take a number of streams. So many people treat streams as just a time to craft, a time to paint, a time to embroider, needlepoint, um, crochet, knit, and chat. I haven't reached that point with the streams yet. I'm still a teacher. I cannot get out of teaching mode. And so what I want to do is find something new every time so that there's something new to learn. And I need, I think, to go beyond that a little bit and get into, let's just make this a more a social gathering. And oh, by the way, I am working from this vintage book and I'm working on this vintage pattern. Or if it's Sundays, of course, I'm spinning, right? And I got Sundays down. I, I got that. It's a spinning. I sit and spin. I talk when people come. Yeah, I got Sundays down. So this one's the next one. We're going to work on this one. Tuesday probably will always be teaching because I got to do it sometime. And it's at least gives me the opportunity to do one time. So let's get off of this full face. And by the way, as I was saying, the music, if it gets in the way, um, I apologize. I am trying to keep it very, very quiet. I know there's probably going to be a lot of vocal there, but I want to go ahead and uh, keep it there 
for the times when I'm really concentrating and not talking, right? I went a little something in the background. All right, and as you can see, I have my mug ready. There is something about sitting and talking all the time that makes me so thirsty. I didn't really mess with this camera much, but it's not too bad. So I found a number of books, and these are only a few of what I found, and that um, light is going to really shine on this. I gave myself up through uh, to ni starting 19 at, before 1950 for these kind of books. Now, when I was doing the first couple of these Throwback Thursdays, it was no problem because they were from the 19, uh, 1919, you know, they were 1928. What I'm saying is they were 100 years old. I didn't really worry too much about what that might be result in, if anything, as far as copyright. These are from the 1940s. So we are past the 60 years, and I'm pretty sure 60 years is plenty. I think 30 years is actually the copyright rule, but that's okay. I'm being safe. So when I went through my old books, I did pick a few that are from the very early 50s, because that's about when I was born and that's when I was born in that period of time and so I figured if I'm old enough they're you know okay too <laughs> I don't know I don't know if I'll use them or not but I I did find a few that that tickled my fancy because they were from the year I was born this one here I could not find anything in the actual book about a date and so I went to Google and Googled it and of course I got a lot of hits because a lot of people have it for sale on uh, eBay uh, various places like that that uh, it, even if it's already been sold it'll still come up as a Google hit right and using several of those from different sources they all gave me the date of 1948 and I wanted to start with this one for a number of reasons. It is called um, Starbook number 62 Revised Beginner's Manual and it addresses three different crafts knitting, crocheting, and tatting. The knitting, I'm going to show the pages but I'm just going to bypass them. Okay, there's nothing of interest to me in that. The crochet is what I was really aiming for. If you've watched the other two or three Throwback Thursdays, you know that I was having a lot of difficulty to get the old time crocheted and knitted or crocheted edgings to work. The knitting edges I got to work from the one pattern that I tried, but it was so big and that is not what I'm looking for. I realized what I'm really looking for is the edging that you put on handkerchiefs. In fact, I did a little bit of looking for how to find the handkerchiefs that have that open, what they call pin stitched edging that you can use to attach your crochet and start your crochet and do the edging right on it. Now, you can buy a hemmed handkerchief and do a rolled hand and sew the edging on perfectly acceptable but the there was an interest in what they called pin stitching you know early in the uh, 1900s when sewing machines came out they brought out sewing machines that did the actual pin stitching and that was punching the holes and making the hem and that's something that was sold a lot but is not sold very much now and is pretty hard to find. Ironically, I was laying in bed doing it on my iPad and I found this really good source. I thought, I don't know, maybe it's not a really uh, legit website because 
I couldn't bring it back up today on my computer here. I was going to put a link on it, and now I can't find it. But I may, you know, that may happen. I may find it later, and we will be talking about this more. But that's that's what I really want to do. I want to make the old-fashioned decorative linens, whether it's a doily that I crochet or it's a piece of fabric that has hardinger on it or it's a hanky that has a crocheted edging or if it's some knitted edging that maybe I use for a pillow or a great big uh, fillet crochet that I put on the front of a pillow all of these kind of things I have a lot of older things that I got from my grandmothers and I plan to bring those out eventually along with all of this and show some of them um, I try not to bring in too much into one stream at one time right and so there'll be opportunities for me to show some of the things that are my uh, creative inspiration and I'm not necessarily trying to recreate exactly the same thing but I also have just a little bit of trouble telling for sure that it's handmade or was commercially made and purchased and so you know when I look at things I I have to say I'm not 100% sure grandma made this or great grandma or you know one of her relatives and passed it on to her whatever I I just know that the source of these doilies and linens and other things that I've gotten were my two grandmothers uh, let's get back to the reason I picked this book the crochet as a beginner manual I thought okay it's an older crochet book it's got a lot of crochet instructions in it maybe there's something that's not clicking for me that I need to find in this book and understand to make some of the older patterns work and and you know I'm pretty much sure that where I was running into problem with the crocheted edgings was the last little statement where you fasten turn and start repeating the pattern it needed to stay going straight so that it was an edging and it was continually wanting to go circular and so that is the part I wasn't quite figuring out it could have been the pattern I picked I plan to try another pattern at some point I just had this in mind for tonight and so you know there are a lot of reasons that it may not have worked but I thought it doesn't hurt for me to take a look at this crochet and see what it has to say third of all this has tatting the basics of tatting and as I've said I need a big refresher course on being able to tat I also need to find my tatting shuttles I, I add one chance to look for them on Monday I didn't come across them I'm going to continue the search for them before I actually buy any but I can put tatting down the road and I will use this book for that the other books are actual edging books and I will talk about those when we get into them One of the things I love about old books, and I pick these up at all sorts of sales, right? I, I can't even begin to tell you where I got this because sometimes it's just this, I go to a yard sale and there's a bag of them for a buck, right? You just, you never know. Sometimes you go to a Goodwill and there's a bag of them. Okay, so more than likely though, a lot of mine, I got them from my grandma because she didn't want them anymore right and um, or people pass them on to me knowing that I like these but what I really like when I get a book like this is to look at what people have marked on there like 
the, especially the X's on the rows, right? Obvious somebody made that pattern, and I like that to see that. Now, I try not to mark my books up too much, and I use a pencil and I erase it, right? I have done that in when I've been knitting from a pattern, a book, a hardback book or whatever, and I always erase it, but I don't know. It, to me, it's kind of fun to find that somebody actually made that pattern. Anyway, on here... We have a whole bunch of numbers and no clue what it is. So I think somebody did some scribbling when, when they were being read numbers of uh, pricings because it's like uh, turf 47.50, tall 24.50. These are $24.50, uh, two and a half $70. There you go. That's your mystery for today. <laughs> and I'm sure it's just somebody's scribble while somebody else was maybe even talking to him on the telephone, you know, uh, 20 years ago, right? So, this is all about learning how to knit. And it's got their knitting is fun. And I'm not really going to go into it. But you can see they've got a really super basic mitten but it not really super basic look at that cable going there right and we got a scarf that would certainly be your good first project uh knitted in what looks like maybe a seed stitch i'll have to look at that and the third one is the lady sweater which who i mean there's never uh enough patterns for your basic v-neck pullover sweater right what i can't understand is ah okay i'm good and by the way this book is taped together and it because the front page is totally off um see this right here that's knitted in as a design element and so is this little sleeve thing it's almost like a sleeve pocket that's our design element Close from the 1940s were very fitted and they were not larger sized like us, uh, a lot of us women are now. So there's just a lot of problems sometimes going and using the vintage patterns for knitted garments. So we got your basic knitting information, how to cast on, how to make a knit stitch, and then right here your stockinette stitch and ribbing binding off increase decrease um just right beginner's problem solved uh you got a runner <laughs> you dropped a stitch yeah all sorts of things like that and then they have this nice little um stitch library and so they just have them listed as pattern one two three but up uh, say so here's your cables your row of cables here's a, a feather fan uh, knit, uh, lace pattern so they just have various very interesting stitches and they tell you how to do it underneath you know it's they're all about six row patterns okay so here's your scarf let's see if that was in seed stitch um, It's on uh, needles number three, and they call for uh, sport yarn. And you cast on 104 stitches, and you do a knit two, purl two, and you do that in the second row, and then you purl two, knit two, and you do that in the fourth row. So it's a rib stitch alternated over two rows, switch over the next two rows. I knew there was a little texture in there. I could see it in the picture. And your mittens. Then, we're, that was it for the knitting. Okay, that's that's all they have. So now we're into crochet. And uh, this is just uh, hysterical. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got a Humpty Dumpty. And these are really interesting, aren't they? 
I, they don't look like they would stay on really well. It's a crossover of just a crocheted, almost like a rib stitch. So let's see how they do that. They call them play shoes. And it looks like... Oh, you actually do the soles also. You can't tell that in this picture that the soles are done. No wonder they say play shoes. They're going to be like slippers, house shoes. They sure don't look crocheted on there, do they? They look like hard soles. I don't know. But the... Is there... Let's see. Continue on page 21. Let me go to 21 and see what the finish is here. So heel seams together and so uh, shaped part of heel section to sole. Cross top section as illustrated and sew to each side of the sole, leaving six stitches free at the center. Right in here. Right in at the center. So that that would be interesting to make, actually. Just to see how it's constructed. I I'm more... I cannot look at the pattern and read every row and figure out how something is constructed. I can't do it with knitting. I can't really do it with crochet. Um, so I can look at the final picture and get a good idea, but I, I find that incredibly hard to believe that that is not a hard sole or something. Anyway, that would be interesting. But this is just two that they show to inspire you to want to crochet, and then they get into the crochet instructions. And that is what I'm actually going to look over here and talk about. Um, they talk about the fact that it uses one hook and that there are uh, different sizes of that and then they show how to make a chain stitch which of course is making your loop uh, hold the end of the thread in the left hand main in the right hand turn it around and in front of the left hand so you can see it's a loop hold loop in place between thumb and then you insert your hook through there and grab it we know how to make a loop but that's what they're saying and then, of course, a chain is insert, grab thread, and pull through. So I got that. I have no trouble with, you know, a chain stitch. I have no trouble with a single crochet, which is an SC. Um, you go down into your one below or wherever you want to put it and throw your... Um, and pull up through okay and then you grab thread and pull through the two that is your single crochet easier said than done I mean easier done than said because when I'm trying to say what they're saying and what I'm seeing um, I can naturally do a single crochet the main thing to remember I guess is how many times you throw your thread over your crochet hook right and a slip stitch, I also knew that you don't throw it at all. You go in, grab your thread behind you, and you go in and pull back to the stitch that was already on your thing. You're not actually grabbing your thread at all. So a slip stitch to me is the same as a join stitch um, where you're anchoring at some point without creating any depth of stitch. They talk about a double crochet, which is where you do it twice, and a treble, which is where you do it three times. And they have a treble treble, which is thread over the hook four times and work them off two at a time. They talk about a cluster stitch, which is where you're going to do 
a either three or four treble in the same base stitch so that they all cluster out from that. These are all really, really basic stitches that I do know how to do and have no trouble doing from the pattern. The only thing I have watched is in the real vintage ones, the that vintage pattern, they did have the listing of how to do a treble stitch. And I did double check to make sure their treble stitch that they were talking about is the same as the treble stitch I was familiar with because the lace that I was working on had a lot of treble stitches in it. And just to show you here, if you didn't catch the stream, I was doing one pattern that basically is supposed to be a straight edge and this nice little peak. So this is this would be the start and it's like a right angle right there and you have this set of cluster going this way. And here is my next repeat and I did exactly that. I got everything all the way except that I could not figure out where to anchor this and then turn and start again because when I turned it looks like it's going to go that way right and so that was where I was running into trouble the first time I did it I did two repeats and I got a three leaf clover I mean <laughs> I'm going to keep that but that's totally wrong it's not an edging it's just a nice little design right and that's because I wasn't attaching it to the same place. And I also wasn't really watching real close about keeping this edge straight. And I knew if I watched from this thread where I started and kept that edge straight, you know, and this was the correct formation for the first one, that's what I wanted to mimic as I went on. Now the other thing I've run into with these and the vintage patterns, everything, no matter the fact that I'm using this super thin yarn, um, crochet cotton and a very tiny hook, um, I am getting these big edgings. And there's no way to tell on the picture what the size is. I, they don't give you measurements like, you know, edging will measure uh, four inches wide edging will measure two inches wide. Anything that gets too big, unless you starch it really hard, isn't going to look real pretty as an edging. So I wasn't real happy with the fact that they were getting real big too. And that's the other reason I pulled out the more updated edging books that we're going to look at a little bit later, because I thought, well, maybe that's more what I'm going for. And these from the vintage patterns were meant to be this big and they just use, you know, bigger edgings than we're used to. So after they go through the basics, then they say it's time for some of the fancy stitches. So this is really what I wanted to take a look at here. Um, increasing, this is something that's good to know. I don't really think I've ever thought of increasing or decreasing in uh, crocheting, but obviously it's necessary, just like it is in knitting. Um, so to increase, work two stitches in one stitch each time directed. So if you want to increase one time, um, you know, increase do two stitches one if it says increase four over a certain period you know you're going to place them over but you're always going to work the two stitches for one increase the decreasing is broken up into single and double crochet and when you do a single crochet and you have your two loops on there insert the hook in the next stitch thread over and draw through stitch. There are now three loops on one hook. Thread over and draw through all three. So instead of doing a single crochet, go to the next stitch, do a single crochet, you do your start of your single crochet, go to your next one, pick up your thread but pull it through all three and that decreases the two base down to one. 
And the double crochet is you double crochet to the point where there are two loops and then you follow the same procedure. You go to the next one, thread over and as if you're going to double crochet twice and then draw it through all four stitches and that's a double crochet decrease. Um, a rib stitch, which is an interesting concept, I don't know if it's stretchier. Uh, crochet tends to be stretchy anyway, but a rib stitch does not go into both of the loops of the stitch below, it goes into the back only. And you do whatever, your single crochet, double crochet, or whatever. A, a pico is where you make a chain and then go right back down into the same place you started and do a slip stitch in order to make your loop. That's a pico. And it'll close up and just make a little solid bump, right, sticking off your um, edge as a design. Now if you're going to do open or fillet mesh, open mesh is OM and sometimes that's a good thing. This, These alone are good to know because you can say OM, OM, what's OM? Open mesh means a fillet um, and that's after you make your chain Work the first double crochet in the eighth chain from the hook, chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next, chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next. That's what's going to make your open square looking mesh that is part of the fillet. And then when you go to the next row, you don't do the eight, you have to fit it, and it looks like it's saying here that you chain five and um, you, you chain five to turn and double crochet in the double crochet, chain two, chain four in the next, and, okay, let's see, chain two, double crochet in the next double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the next, there was no chain four in there. You're going to uh, chain five to, to turn, you're going to do a double crochet uh, where the double crochet is below it and that's what gives it this even open mesh work. Now the block or solid mesh is what makes the pattern part of the fillet cl uh, crochet, right? Where it's solid double crochets in a row and then you do the solid double crochets over an open space that fills in and you're going to eventually get a pattern. But you have to follow the directions in order for the pattern placement to work out right. They got a popcorn stitch which is really just like a pico only with double crochets. Um, they got a cross treble crochet. They've got a lace it stitch where it's very open, like that. African stitch is something that you use a special crochet hook with. And you go, you start with a chain and you pick up each stitch of the chain, leaving all the loops on the needle, and then work back by drawing yarn through first loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. I like African stitch. It's very relaxing to do. You can change color a lot. Um, it's a nice thick fabric for crochet. It doesn't have that, uh, some of that, uh, it lays flatter than some of your crochet work will. So I really like African stitch, but it does take the special uh, crochet hook. And a lot of times they're very long because it's called an afghan stitch for a reason. People would make strips to sew together for afghans, right, out of this, or even maybe baby blankets where it's all on the same hook, but it can't be sliding off the end, and there's no stopper. Oh, let me take that back. Maybe there is a stopper, like a knitting needle. I think there is. I think there's an end on them, like a knitting needle. This star stitch 
intrigued me because I thought that this is what the baby blanket that my was given to my daughter when she was a baby. I thought that this is how it was made. It turned out it wasn't. It was something called a jasmine stitch and it took a lot of research. Um, after she had her own baby and we wanted to duplicate it, we took a lot of research to find that out and to get it. And fortunately, she still had some of that blanket so that we could really analyze the stitch and send a picture of it where other people made suggestions and we tried it and we finally did find the right one. And the real difference is this star stitch is linear. It goes in a line. And hers had a very circular connected kind of pattern to the stars and so that's why it wasn't the star stitch wasn't right but it's a real pretty uh, blanket stitch for a baby blanket it's very um, kind of decorative and has that firmer foundation and fabric than um, like the afghan stitch the knot stitch sometimes called lover's knot stitch i've never done I haven't heard of it. it. I can see totally that it's just a uh, series of chains and um, drawing and, and attachments and that sort of thing. And it sounds like that one might be a good one for me to work up because it might help me figure out where's being attached where. Let me read through this real quick. I don't know. I think I may try that real quick. Let me get my... I still have this attached. I, I guess I sort of vaguely thought maybe I would do some more and figure it out, but I'm, uh, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm going to go on and, and try and find other uh, edging patterns in the old magazine and work on those. Alright, this says chain for desired length. And one of the things I don't get, I'm not used to at all, is uh, I still want to put my uh, crochet cotton as if I was casting on <laughs> instead of, you know, I do leave a, a little bit of a length there that helps me orient and find where I started if I'm trying to keep something. And do you know what? There is no indication as to whether this is going to be an edging or not, whether it's meant to be um, in a line or circular. There is no indication that you need a specific divisible number in this pattern. Like, you know, it should be in divisible by four because the pattern is going to be in something that happens in groups of four. So we're just going to see. I haven't even counted how many I have. Okay. Now we're going to go to draw a quarter inch loop on the hook. How much is a quarter inch? That's about like that. Thread over and pull through chain. Single crochet in single loop of stitch. I need to get my hand up here where you can see. Single crochet in the single loop of the stitch. So there is a single loop right there. Same stitch. That's hard to do. That's kind of like... Alright. That's kind of like knitting back into the same stitch, really. Alright, there's your single crochet in the single loop of stitch. Draw another quarter inch loop. Okay. 
just did. Single crochet into loop. Really? Okay. That's interesting. You're making a chain that is somewhat more decorative than and you're not making a double crochet. Alright, that didn't work. Let me start back here. There's my quarter inch. And there's my single crochet if I don't lose it. Am I in the camera? Okay. The secret is grabbing the stitch you want to come out of with your fingernails. Skip four stitches and single crochet in the next stitch. Well, that looks really sloppy. All right. There's one, two, three, four. Skip four, single crochet in the next. And then repeat about drawing the loop and making the single crochet. All right, so the, you got this interesting squirrely, uh, squiggly squirrel thing that uh, that's your lover's knot right there. All right, so draw up quarter inch. Don't knock your ball of yarn off, crochet cotton. It isn't yarn. Get everything all set again. Go into the single below it, which just seems almost impossible. All right. Let me do this again. This is a single crochet fifth chain from the hook. Draw up a quarter, go into the single, grab the thread, and pull it through. Single crochet, I did that, draw another quarter inch. Okay, stick it right into that single right below it and draw it through. Grab thread and draw it through. I did it twice and now I'm supposed to skip four and do a single crochet. So we've got one, I never know how to count these. One, two, three, four, that's five. Pull a quarter inch. So after you have a loop, you pull up, a, you catch your thread, pull up another loop about a quarter inch, you go back down where you just pulled it up from, go into the single thread that's there, grab your thread, and you know, make a second loop on your thing, and but don't don't single crochet it, just go continue on through. And I think you do that twice. Quarter inch quarter inch. Yep, you do it twice. And then you skip four. One. Let me stretch this out. One, two, three, four. Oops. And do a single crochet.
Once you have that loop on there, you grab your thread, pull it for a quarter inch. I'm taking my finger and going and grabbing this right underneath where the single thread is. Throw the thread and going through the single and through the loop. Do it again, pulling quarter inch. Go into the stitch single right below it. Catch your thread over your needle and pull through there. Alright. Well, this seems tiny enough. One, two, three, four. I wonder... Okay, so it says to make three eighth inch knots, single crochet in the loop at the right of the single crochet and single crochet in the loop at the left of the single of the previous row. Work a knot, stitch, and repeat. Whoa. All right, I don't know what that's talking about. To turn make three eighth inch knots and they are telling you how to do that okay and then you turn and you work okay all right so i'm not to the point of turning here yet but i sh shouldn't take too much longer and i will try one turn all right Pull up quarter inch, go down, grab your thread, and pull it through both. Pull up quarter inch, and I am, after I get that all done, kind of tightening everything up, I'm also straightening. You know, making sure I'm not twisting anything. It look, doesn't look like anything on here right now. Or did I twist that? Let me see. Ah, I think it's twist. I think I twisted it somewhere along the way there. Definitely could use some pinning. You see that? Don't look like much of anything yet, does it? first one looked good, but the, the rest, maybe I'm pulling too tight. I don't know. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. This is the fifth one. So, see, this is where I said that I, they should say how many stitches it needs, but I guess you just work that out. Now I'm just going to put this last one in the almost last chain. All right, now let's see how, what they say about turning. Make three eighth inch knots. So single crochet in the loop at the right of the single crochet.
and single crochet to the left of a single crochet. And I'm talking about that single crochet that you did after the chain four. I mean, after skipping four chains. Work a knot stitch and repeat. So I guess this is where we turn and work a knot stitch. But now, see, they don't talk about where you connect it. <laughs> All right. Let's draw a quarter inch loop. Let's follow this directions here. It's a knot stitch. Skip four single crochets and single crochet in the next stitch. So <laughs> I have no idea. It kind of looks like it's right in the middle of this by the picture. Which I don't know how that's for single crochets. Seems like an awful lot of work where you could just do chains <laughs> and not worry about it. Hi, Mass Bandit. You forgot it was Thursday. <laughs> That's all right. You can see I'm really focused on this right now. Uh, I wasn't even looking. But I'm almost, I'm going to do this one more row and then I'll stop. I'm working on what's supposed to be called the knot stitch or the lover's knot pattern. Uh, which is this right here. So I've got a couple more here. Um, so the knot stitch is you pull your, you catch your thread and pull it about a quarter inch up and then you go down where you just pulled it through, catch your thread again and go through the two of them. It seems like a very convoluted chain. You pull a quarter inch, you go down, bring your thread through. Oops, I don't I didn't do that one right. How are you, Mass Bandit? I haven't seen you for a little bit. Are you staying well? Are you doing okay?
And then after you do this kind of convoluted knot stitch, you attach it with a single crochet in the middle of the previous uh, chain or convoluted knot stitch. I got sidetracked. This was not what I was going to start out doing tonight. It's on the next page, but I got sidetracked by this stitch, so I thought I'd go ahead and do it. I got the time tonight. Sometimes I wonder if my problem is doing it in this really fine thread. You know, maybe I ought to do it in uh, worsted with a big crochet hook and then you could really see the pattern you know let me try that sometime all right that didn't work what happened You're just trying to stay healthy. I know. Got a link to an article about Irish Crusade. I want to read in my uh, email today. Start with the bigger f thread first. I find that helps me when working on a new design for my tatting too. Can you can you tat with a thicker thread? Well, maybe not thick like worsted weight yarn, um, but. I, I think that might be a good idea, too. Um, feel free if you want to share um, the link for the article on Irish Crochet in the, in the uh, Discord. That'd be great. In my Discord. I'd appreciate that. They, okay, after I do my second um Let's, let me lay this out here. It's all twisty. Alright, here's my start. So, let me make that big and do this right. There. I actually got that flat now. Can you see it? It looks like a bunch of <laughs> poor tensioned crochet. Um anyway, to go back, you're you're have single crocheted it into you know the top of these loops right here. And then you're supposed to um, uh, single crochet to the right, single crochet to the left, and turn and start again with your um, knot stitch. And that's how you go back and forth on it. Oh, shoot. I have a spammer. Let me fix that.
All right, I just submitted a report and blocked them. And if I, is it going to take it off? All right, there we go. All right, not thick, thick, but a number 12 instead of 30, 40, or 50. Yeah, okay. You think it looks pretty cool? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I am going to go do uh, Irish Crochet right here now next. Um, this is a 1948 book that I had up in my library that is a beginner's manual for knitting, crocheting, and tatting. And I absolutely intend to use the tatting. I can't find my shuttles. I'm looking. I have been looking. <laughs> so um, I will refresh myself by using this to, to start out with. But I was doing the crochet tonight and I um, was looking at some of their Okay, here's, you know, here's some more advanced ones, and I got intrigued by this knot stitch, so that's why. But the next page in here is, uh, well, things you can make with crochet to decorate your house, and that one is just, I'm not into that pom-pom or fringe or any, in, any of that, except this, I like this kind of work. You know, I really do like the looks of that, and I have never actually made any like that. But I like that look. So that that's cool. And I'll try and remember um, when I want to do that. Uh, to use those directions to do it sometime. So this is what they have for Irish crochet. And it looks like it's uh, a background one. Background two and background three and then they have a rose right here and a motif right there uh, let me get the rose in better in the camera come on rose there and it's the rose i want to try right now uh tonight um i don't know how much more time i'll have whether i'll work on that or not but And then it has, before I get started on that, it has um, wool crochet, which, you know, they're talking about crocheting with larger yarn. And so these are not your edgings. They're the traditional baby items. I, I do like that sweater. That is cute. And it would be really cute in today's modern yarn instead of their 100% uh, wool. And then this gets into the tatting. Um, so that's, that's the extent of the crochet and why I chose to work on this rose motif. Yeah, I know shuttles, I have not used them for so long. I can't even rethink my process of where I would put it that would be a safe place, if, if you know what I mean. You know, you tend to, I checked my sewing cabinet which has all the little drawers I checked there they weren't there I checked my bobbin lace supplies and all my bobbins and thread are there but no shuttles so at this point I have two places that I need to look one will be quick it's my actual it's another knitting notion thing that I didn't look in I don't know that they'd be there and the last place is big it's a shelf that has a lot of different crafting supplies on and there might be a box in there that has all that in there so plus i i need to get through in that it has a lot of this kind of um, this kind of thread and different weights that i only grabbed this when i got this idea and started on this so i haven't really tried anything with heavier weights and different colors and all that good fun stuff So let's let's look at this pattern. 
So you chain seven, form a ring, chain six, double crochet into ring, chain three, double crochet into ring. So you're just going around in the ring making your loops. In each loop work one single crochet, one double crochet, whoops, one single double crochet. Uh oh, I need to, oh here we go, crochet abbreviations, SD, SDC. So SC is single, SDC, better be here, work one single crochet, one short double, short double crochet, three double crochet, one short double. Okay, so a short double is you don't, uh, you pull through Uh, thread over hook, insert hook in third chain from hook, draw thread through the three loops, thread over hook and draw through all three loops on hook. I'll have to double, I'll have to go back to that and check when I'm ready to do that. Okay. Oh, variegated thread sounds beautiful, especially pastels maybe. You know, I do have old work and one of my absolute favorite is pansies and I can tell that the pansy was done with a variegated purple thread right and it did it made it look so realistic as a, a flower all right How do you do the background? So let me talk about that a little bit. Make a chain, <laughs> make a chain a trifle longer than needed. <laughs> That's real precise. Single crochet in the 10th stitch from the hook, chain six, skip three, single crochet in the next stitch. Chain six, skip three, single crochet in the next step. Okay. So that's this um, mesh looking. So I really need to research this Irish crochet a little more because my question is, so they do you all your background, but you stick your motifs in wherever you want to to make whatever you want, I think. This is very limited. They're not there's not a lot of talk about it. Any and any big big specific pattern. All right. I wonder if, let me try this a little bit thicker. This is a, a wool yarn. And I'll put it down here so it's out of the way. Let me try it in a little bit of thicker yarn here. Chain five and form a ring. Irish crochet was worked in individual small pieces called motifs or in bits such as flowers, leaves such as shamrocks, or in grape clusters. They were assembled on a network of mesh in a freeform manner. So this background mesh would just be made to whatever size you wanted and then you sewed your motifs on them. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mass Man. I'm so glad you came by today. That's wonderful to know. It would be it would be helpful if I read my right pattern. I was doing the motif and I want to do the rows. So I got chain seven to start. That'll be interesting. I'll read that. Four, five, six. That makes a bigger ring. Okay. I'm going to have room to put all my double crochets in there. Okay. Chain six, double crochet into ring. Three, four, five, six, double crochet into the ring. Let me go this way. I like working into rings instead of trying to go into stitches easier to hit. Chain three, double crochet into ring three times. That's one. That's two. That's three. Okay. Chain three and join in third stitch of the chain, six of the beginning. Okay, so chain three and join. And should be joining right there. Okay, so far so good. A little lopsided, but I need to get myself situated better here. <clears throat> So that I have the camera where I'm working. Yeah. All right, second row in each loop work. Okay, this is where I do a single crochet, a short double. All right. So there's the single. Let's see if I can figure out this short double. Okay. You're going to draw your thread through. 
Okay, so you already you do a throw over for the double, draw your thread through, three loops on the hook, thread over and draw through all three. Okay, that makes sense. Three double. One. Two. Three. And then a short double. And a single. Voila! Nice! Nice! That then... I'm putting it over my book, so... Let me see if I can fold this back. Look over there. Boy, the lighting's bad tonight. Okay. in each loop. So I did one loop. We have two, three, four, five, six, we had seven loops I guess. Okay. Nice! This is, I can remember this. Short double and a single. Three doubles. I will, I think I can put this rose motif pattern and the knot stitch one two three on the discord like I did the vintage this is from 1948 I don't think there's going to be any problem with whoops maybe putting them on there I'm laying on my thread. One, two, three, short double and single. Hi, Punk Pixie. I am making this Irish rose right there. Which is a motif for uh, Irish crochet. And it is from a 1948 um, star. book which is taped together and falling apart <laughs> welcome to throwback Thursdays okay I have one more 
It, I'm getting my, it's kind of hard to focus, but I'm getting my rows going there. I've got one more little ring to do here, and then for the second row, and then we'll go on to the third. Uh, Punk Pixie, do you crochet? It looks like a rose. It looks like a flower, anyway. <laughs> One. Two. Three. I like it when you crochet something and it looks like something right away. All right, now row three, chain five, single crochet in the back of work between the single crochets of the next two petals. Uh oh. One step at a time here. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Okay. Chain five, single crochet in the back of work between the single crochets of the next two petals. In the back of the, oh, this is gonna make it stand up right there. That's what's, you can see on here, it makes it stand up. Okay, make sure I'm doing this right. Single crochet in the back of the work between the single crochets of the next two petals. Yeah, I know that's right. Single crochet. You know, that's weird though, because it wants to go on the front. I wonder if it's going to flip over. Can't flip over. Um, okay, I'm at a an indecision point. It, it says in the back though. It says single crochet in the back of the work between. So in the back of the work means like behind it, I would think. So we're going to make the petal stand up with this chain five. One, two, Three, four, five. Well, I just learned something new. I've never used like an anchoring chain to make something stand up. All right, come on. It's hard to find the where to put the single crochet here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then um, repeat all around. And then the fourth row is in each loop. Ah, okay. So where I have a chain five, which I haven't hit yet, I have one more to do. I'm going to do another set of petals. Love it when a plan comes together. Uh, 
Okay. So now, where's my loop? There it is. Gonna do a single crochet, short double. She still crochets doilies though and mails them to me sometimes. How sweet. <laughs> I like that. I don't I don't have a grandmother anymore. My unfortunately. I am channeling my grandmothers. Well, one of them. One was a needleworker, the other was a gardener. So when I garden, I'm channeling one, and when I'm doing this, I'm channeling the other one. One. Two. Yeah, my work's kind of sloppy. I don't have good tension here. Three. Half double. And a single. And I have another petal. Behind the first one. Oh, really? They're in super bonkers colors, like pink and orange or yellow and mauve. You think she's crocheting through her stash? <laughs> Sounds like 70 colors. <laughs> Maybe she thinks that makes them more modern. <laughs> That's okay. They'll be classic some days. Any handwork is, really, you know? It's any handwork special. It's one. Two. Three. Half double and... Oops, don't put it through. Single. You know, I, I do this and I always wonder, you know, I know these patterns are old. My goodness, but who first thought of them in the first place? I mean, somebody's grandmother taught them and that, I mean, it just goes back for so many years, but somebody finally said, hey, you know, we need to write this down. One, two, three, half double, and a single. Oh my, oh my, oh my, that's fun. It's working. I just had to make something that's round. You know, everything I wanted to make that I was trying to make as a straight edging was going round. I just have to make round things, right? It's only round doilies for me from here on in, right? Count my doubles. Two. Three. Half double. And single. Besides, it's an easy pattern to remember for those petals. I 
Ah, start over. Screwed up my double. One, two, three. Okay, I have made it around. So I now have two rows of petals. Oops, so that's so not good to focus. That might help a little bit. <laughs> I have got to change the overhead light up there. It just, it's, it's just, it's wonderful for an overhead light and it's, too bright for nighttime. It's not so bad when I have the daylight behind me at that window, you know, and I'm streaming, but nighttime, it really glares. Okay, so I'm going to do the next row is chain seven and go around behind these petals. And then after that, I fill in the petals and I will have three rows and I'll be done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven chain, and connect it right here. Is it a single crochet? Yeah. A slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. I see more roses in my future here. These are going to be fun to put on little hand knitted things, pouches or whatever. These are going to be fun little decorations. Split my thread. Yeah, they don't go with anything you own. I can believe that. Okay, now I'm going to do the loops. Fill them in with petals. One single crochet, short double, seven. Oh, you know what? I was supposed to do five. Oh, I made a mistake. I was supposed to do five in the second row. I only did three, just like the first row. Okay. I'm not going to take it out, but that was, I can see the region it increases like that okay go make supper i'm really glad you stopped in punk pixie have a good night too see you later sometime
two. Four, five, six, seven. So the question is whether, yeah, see the, the five isn't big enough to stand up behind the, I mean the seven is too many for standing up behind three instead of five. Cat attack. <laughs> Did the cat get your keyboard? Because I don't see anything that looks like a keyboard cat attack. I've seen that, so I know what that looks like. And <laughs> she's taken over. Yeah. So the one thing I'm finding with this is it's not de developing the 3D that it looks like it should, which seems to imply that it needs to be, oh, maybe a tighter tension. But I think that'll come. You know, I make a couple of these. I'm pretty sure I can get that 3D look going. One. Two. Three. I may have a real loose tension crocheting. I tend to be a pretty loose knitter also. Yeah, with the practice, yeah. I think I think that's very true. I especially with the small the thinner thread. You know, I I don't think I'd have as much trouble with if I'm crocheting and I know I'm not I don't have the trouble when I crochet an Afghan because I've done a fair number of those. And they come out 
rectangle and everything. Three. One more petal. I I like the design of this. It tickles me to put the petals behind each other. I like making those the perfect shell of the petals to Six. Seven. All right, and it says fasten off, which I think I will. It is. It it's three dimensional. Look at that. Yeah, this would really be pretty and variegated. <laughs> it's almost like a little teacup. I am chuffed with that. That's cool. All right. We're going to put this book up for a little bit. And that's definitely a keeper pattern. Boy, it's definitely a keeper pattern. I got about 15 minutes left here, and I thought I would go into edgings. Because when I started out the thing, I'm going to be talking a lot here. So I think... I'm going to change the pretzel to something else. <laughs> this is called the French feeling. Let's have some French Parisian music. Um, when I was talking a little bit, I was saying that what started my interest in the vintage and the first things I wanted to do out of those really old needlecraft magazines was the edgings and they all were coming out so big and I I really am interested in doing edgings around handkerchiefs and maybe pillowcases but the handkerchief is the really what I would like to do and what appeals to me so that's not, I mean, it can be big, but it's very usually dainty and uh, pretty tight um, and um, compact so that it holds its own on the edge without starching or whatever. And I got 
after I went through all my books upstairs on Monday and I pulled out a few, I got to thinking maybe the ones from the Needlecraft magazines were made to be big. And maybe I need more closer to what was what I'm more familiar with from handkerchiefs that I've received as uh, from my grandmothers and that sort of thing, you know, and that would be more from the 40s the or earlier, but I don't have anything earlier. So I have some books that are from the 40s here, and I thought it would be you enabler you. I just went to Amazon and ordered a book on Irish crochet. <laughs> oh, that's so cool, though. Oh, I'm glad you got that. I'll, I'll hold off on that. For a little bit. I have so many other areas to explore, but I you enjoy. I hope that really goes well for you. <laughs> I can't wait to see something you make. That's going to be so much fun. What I was saying at the beginning is what I love about these books that are older is if they have any writing on them or if they've been checked off because somebody did the pattern or made notes. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Don't find many notes. And I am not a person to write in my books. So, you know, I can totally understand if people don't write. But this one, the next three, no, the next two, this one and the next one, all have Ka the name Kathy on it. And it's uh, written with a pencil, but it's spelled T, I mean, C-A-T-H-E-Y, which is an unusual spelling of Kathy. I don't see it very often. And we've got what the very first thing, what they call Irish beauties. Aren't those gorgeous? See, and this <clears throat> still is not handkerchief edging. It's too big. But, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. You know, for an edge of a, a doily. Um, and I discovered that what you need is... Uh, either pin stitched fabric, you know, like if you'd get some Irish linen, some good um, linen, and have it sewn so it's pin stitched, it has holes all the way around it, and that's how you start your chain and attach it. But I think you can also do this separately and sew it on, you know. But that's this would be more pillowcase, doily, uh, square. Or rectangle or whatever but this is the kind right here right here this is what I think of as traditional where my thumb is handkerchief edging all of those actually I mean they look like what I have on some of, my, of the handkerchiefs that I've been given so I believe that this is more in style of what I want to try and see if it works. And I fully intend to try and get some handkerchiefs to do them on. I'm still looking to see if I can purchase them or if I'm going to actually have to um, just buy the fabric and hem stitch them myself. And here is a really good example of what they look like when they're on the fabric. And that's helpful too. Because you can see right there the holes and how that's put in there in order to start it and go around. So, I mean, I love this book. This book is from, uh, hmm, 42, I think. Yeah, 1942. This book is from 1942. We have tatted and this is beading is back, but I don't believe that they're talking about actual beads in there. I think they're talking about the little knots that are made. But when I look at something like this one right here, I, you know, you thread ribbon through there and for your trim and that is really pretty too this one here also could have a wide ribbon either going through it or underneath it so that when you sew it you sew the two in place 
The tattered ones look gorgeous, but ooh, wow. These are considered for baby, to put on baby layout. And then we get into hairpin lace, which is something else I've got to look for, because I'm pretty sure I have that uh, pin somewhere that's U-shaped, and I have never tried it. So, And then we've got uh, medallions with fillet. And there's your alphabet. That's handy to be able to monogram stuff. Now these are knitted edgings, and I'm glad to have this too. This is, um, they say, a heavy lace. They don't really say what it's used on, but um, this kind of thing, the insertion, you know, is definitely something that could be sewn onto a knitted fabric or just... Oops, let me get that in the camera. When it's flat and, and rectangular like that, it's called an assertion. So, you know, it could be done and then maybe picked up on the edge and continued as in a scarf or something. It's almost like you could add them all together and, and make scarf pattern if you wanted to. These are more knitted edges. No, these are double crocheted. These are crocheted. Both crocheted as these are. This book is just, oh my gosh, it would look like a foo-foo house <laughs> with everything all decorated up. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love rabbits. I, we've got rabbits. Rabbit. Oh, I got to do rabbits. Oh, that is so cute. Put that on the end of a, uh, oh, what goes, a runner on your table. That is so cute. I've not looked at these books for a long time. And we have the alder cloths, which are always and ha always have been something that women would do for the churches. And we have so many pages of instruction, so that is it. That star book of a hundred edgings, and I believe it because there were a hundred, there were a lot in there. This one I have seen many 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 places this one was probably the most popular edging uh book that because you know when i look online to buy old books i i see this i recognize it immediately because i know i have it and it's so distinctive with that blue and everything and this one is from 45 so what they do is they show all, and this is what I like, all these really tiny edgings and put a pattern number right there. So then you have to go and look up the pattern number in the book in order to make it. And I would be uh, not surprised at all that um, there would be duplicates between the two books. They say nosegays. Um, these sparkling edgings give your handkerchief individual charms and they're saying use um, mercerized sewing thread size 50 with steel crochet hooks 14 the tatting cotton cotton size 70 with a hook size 13 and six cord mercerized co uh, crochet cotton uh, size 30 with a crochet hook size 10 so I don't know if you I choose your um, thread and then your hook and that will determine how much you know how big it is whether it's tiny or medium or bigger. These do show a larger edging on a handkerchief, and it is pretty, isn't it? I guess you would just iron it so that it looks pretty. Lacy edgings lend a note of glamour to your bathroom. 
your hand towels. And then they have these heavier ones for bath towel edgings, which I, I have never had a bath towel that had an edging on it. <laughs> oh, that one is pretty. This one here looks it has the rose, sort of like what I just did, but in a uh, insert style crochet strip. This is also really different too. You got your insert, insertion and edging that match. That's cool. And we have edgings for sheets and pillowcases. So there is so much in these books Look at this, there's two pages of multiple of different ones because they're like three rows, right, to make them. So that's Edgings, 100 Old and New Favorites by um, J.P. Coates. And the last one is the <laughs> youngest it is from 1949 and it also is just handkerchief edgings and again not as many in there but very different and pretty <laughs> They're all beautiful. They call hairpin lace angel lace in here. And they have made a butterfly with it. And this actually has a pretty good instruction on how to do the hairpin lace. So that, that's going to be helpful when I try to do something. I like that. Yeah. I know. It's got uh, seven rows. Oh, no, 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 no. There's... Okay, so... They're consider the wings and all that pineapples. Uh, you know, oh, sorry. And so there's more rows in that. Let's see, continue on row, continue page 15. Uh, which one is this? 181. Yeah, it's... First pineapple, second pineapple, edging, and antennae. <laughs> That's pretty complicated. But it's cool. They put that on the edge of, they actually put that on the edge, it looks like, of cloth here. So, you know, I would assume that could be like a dresser scarf or something like that. That would be really fun. I do actually use some things like dresser scarves and things like that that I've gotten over the years or found, you know, at um, different sales. So that's, I have three books that are really cool edgings and one very successful rose. <laughs> that's a really good place to stop I think for tonight and thank you Mass Bandit especially for your information on the Irish Crochet and good luck I was 
I'm very happy to enable you. <laughs> I love that. I hope it's a great book. I hope you enjoy it. You know, I have a lot of books, too. I went through pamphlet books, right? The pattern books, but I have other how-to books, too. I gotta need, I gotta take a look at some of those um, and see what we can find in that treasure trove, too. All right, I'm going to be back Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock till 5, and I'm going to be spinning. So, until then, Mass Bandit, have a good night. And anybody else that checks this out after the fact on Video On Demand, thanks for watching. To the end, I hope you enjoyed all of this uh, looking into the past and the patterns of what they made that was very current and popular. So, see you later. Bye.